Hi, AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School, and we are nearing the end of this rather long journey through topics 4.4 and 4.5, which is all about related rates in the AP Calculus course and exam description. And we're going to take a look at our second cone problem. I remember telling you back in example 9 that cone problems are a little bit unusual when you encounter them on the AP exam in a course in a normal Calc 1 course, even at the college level, because there's a couple of little tricks that you have to use. So we are going to be inside a conical tank and figuring out some rates of change. So let's take a look. The problem says that water is draining from a conical tank with the vertex down at the rate of 2 cubic meters per second. The tank is 16 meters high. Its top radius is 4 meters. How fast is the water level falling when the water level is 12 meters high? So we're going to start our problems like we normally do with this beautiful picture. An inverted conical tank would look like a cone that's situated like this. And we have a cone that has a very specific height, right? of 16 meters and this cone has a very specific radius of 4 meters but we must consider the fact that this cone is filled with water but this water is not staying at the same level it's draining out of the bottom so it might look something like this and therefore this is changing and where there's water there's always danger so what we've got to do here is consider the fact that there's also a height of the water level that is something that is going to be changing, right? We'll call that h. And then we also have a radius of that water position that is changing, so we're going to call that r. And I think we've got the picture going here that we can start to really glean some information. So I'm going to go ahead and write our given and our find and our equation statements, which are always very helpful to get your related rate problem started. Now, you don't have to write these, but you'll notice in some of my earlier videos, I had the problems pre-scaffold where those headings were already um, on the paper. So what are we given? Well, we're given a rate here. The rate of change of the water, the water is draining out at a rate of two. Now, if you're not sure what derivative to call that, take a good look at the label. Cubic meters ought to tell you a lot. That is a measure of volume. And of course, per time means that this is a related rate with respect to time. So derivative of volume with respect to time. And the next thing that we want to be able to take from this is the fact that it says that the water is draining which is sort of a negatively charged word, which means that that 2 should be a negative. We are trying to find how fast is the water level falling. So that is a dh dt. There's your water level indicated in the picture. And we want to find that specifically when the height of the water is 12. Height is 12. And then as far as the equations, I don't know why I wrote equations. There yeah, it's, there kind of is two equations. We'll talk about that. But the equation that I'm talking about here is the volume of a cone, and we're going to be provided with that. So you don't have to worry about memorizing that for the AP exam. So remember our problem from before? I'm as excited as you are to take this derivative, and don't hide it. I know you are. But if we want to take the derivative of this using the product rule, we're going to have some issues. Just like the last problem, this is going to beget a dr dt, and this is going to beget a dh dt at some point. And if you start looking through all of this find information, as I said before, the dr dt is bad. We do not want him around. So we got to get rid of them. Now, if you watched. Example 9, you notice that there was a really explicit sentence or phrase in the problem that kind of related R in terms of H. We don't have that in this problem. And this is probably your more standard cone question that's a little bit more challenging. So I'm going to weave a little magic. I'm going to go to my picture and I'm going to start taking pieces of 
away from this cone. And I want you to watch. I'm going to make this a little bit thicker marker so it stands out. So I'm going to take a shape that looks like this. Now because that's kind of in the middle of all the action, I'm going to extract that piece out with the magic of my software. And I'm going to label the top 4 and the vertical side here 16, because that's where that came from, right? Well, we'll weave a little bit more magic, how's that? And do the same thing with the water level, just like that. And if I extract it out, you're going to notice something really cool. These triangles have this very neat relationship in that they are similar. Now, how do you know that? Well, they share a common side down here at the bottom, a common vertex, I should say, at the bottom, and they both have a 90 degree angle. So by angle, angle, similarity, I can call these two triangles similar. And the dimensions of this green triangle would be the R by the H. Now, what does that mean when you have similar triangles? Well, you can set up a proportion. And it doesn't really matter how you set it up. You could say something to the effect of the radius of the big triangle divided by the radius of the small triangle. Now you're stuck, and you'd have to set this equal to the height of the large triangle divided by the height of the small triangle. But again, you could have put this together as like 4 divided by 16 equals R divided by H, among another option or two. It doesn't matter as long as you set it up consistently, because if you cross multiply, and oops, I already messed up. This is supposed to be an H, not a 4. Sort of was an upside down H, I think. So let's talk about that again. 4 divided by R would equal 16 divided by H. I apologize for that. Now we'll cross multiply, and you're going to solve for r. So you're going to divide 16 over 4 sixteenths is just 1 fourth. And you want to solve for the bad variable because you want him out. So what that means is your brand new volume formula is not 1 third pi r squared h, but it's 1 third pi. Switch the r out in place of it will now be 1 fourth h. It must still be squared, and you still multiply by h. Now you can clean this up. The 4, or the 1 fourth squared, I should say, is 1 16th. If that's multiplied by 1 third, I have actually a 1 48th there. The pi drops down. That makes for my constant. And then h squared times h is h to the third. Just doing some basic algebra there. So now we have this equation in a form that makes it very easy to take its derivative with respect to t. The 3 is going to move out in front, multiply by the 1 over 48. That would actually reduce to 1 16th times your pi again. And then h cubed becomes h squared. But alas, don't forget to multiply by the dh over dt. And again, I'm a big fan, I'm a big advocate of writing out the find given an equation because now you have all of the tools at your disposal. You know that you're solving for this guy right here, so he's going to stay as a variable. So the other two things are things that we should know, and lo and behold, they are. The dVt is negative 2, and we're finding this rate specifically when h is 12, which means that the h squared would be 144. Now from here, it's just, again, some basic algebra. So I'm going to just pick up where I left off over here in this next column. Negative 2 would be equivalent to 144 over 16. It, it's a pretty nice number, guys. It's, it divides out to be 9. You might have to play around with that. If this was a no calculator question, you might have to kind of think through those possibilities and reduce, but you would get to the 9 eventually. And then multiply that by dh dt. And if you watched the last video, you probably learned that Mr. Record is not a fan of the diagonal fraction bar. I hate it. Just, I'm not going I'm not going to lie. I just hate it. I think this horizontal fraction bar is a much safer way to present fractions because you won't get, you know, confused about what truly is in the denominator. And then you've got your dh dt. It would be measured in meters because we're talking about a height change per the time 
which is seconds. And the fact that it's negative clearly makes sense because our water level is dropping. Boy, I hope our shark's going to be okay, because that would be bad. There's your cone problem that uses the idea of the similar triangle. We have one more video left. It's a shadow problem uh, with our example number 10. We hope that you stick around for the grand finale of our related rates unit. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you next time.